so let's get back into log selection. You need to know what log's going to go on next. You need to know what you're looking for. And as I think I said already, the basic rule is find out what the difference between the height of the logs are. This would be 12 and a half centimeters. And then you want the next log should be a little more than twice that. So I've got the next log here is going to be 27, 28, something like that. Now, what you should be trying to do, what's sensible to do, let's put it that way, is when you're selecting your logs initially, when you're looking for your logs, you're looking for logs that are straight. And you're looking for logs that are all roughly the same size and that don't have a huge variation between the wide end and the thin end. That's what you should do. Now, again, it stinks to say, do as I say and not as I do. I don't work that way because I really like working with bent logs. I like a big variation in size. I think that in the end product, you get a much more interesting building with a lot more character. But all those things make it much, much diff more difficult. So, especially if you're new to log carving, log building, try and get your logs to be all the same size. And if you do that, then these calculations that you're doing continually, there won't be a big vari vari variation in those. You'll always be dropping by about the same amount. Now, as well as, well as measuring here, something to take into account is to always measure from, in this case, the floor, but usually it would be from the foundation. So a 77 and check your corners. Try and keep them around about the same. If one's going up, you know, the next log should be a little bit smaller. Um, the basic rule of where, which way round the logs go is, for instance, this one, this is the big end, that's the small end. The one underneath is the other way around. You alternate it. So the big end's here, that's the small end, this is the big end, that's the small end. Now the reason I'm having to tell you that at this point is because I'm gonna be deviating from that. Because of the shape of this building, and that it's gonna be rising up towards the top, I'm going to continue alternating this back wall, but all the other walls, I'm going to have all the big ends at that end, small ends at this end. I've already done it with this one. So this is now rising up this way. And I'll continue that, rise up that way. And I think that's going to be quite a nice visual element to see that the, the, the logs are not going that horizontally, they're starting to go up with the shape of the build, in line with the shape of the building. Okay. I think that's it for now on selecting your logs. No, I was wrong, that isn't everything. Like I said, if you've got all your logs pretty much the, the, the same kind of size, and that's good. But they're never gonna be exactly the same size, so you do have to keep an eye on it. And basically, it's kind of like chess, you've got to think a couple of moves ahead. Now, for instance, um, I know I've got some big logs coming. So what I've done is, this is a fairly small log, and I actually sunk it quite deep in, so there wasn't much left, which meant that I could then get a middle-sized log on here. And after sinking that down, it's left quite a lot here, so I'm ready for that big log to go this way. Big enough so that I've got a reasonable amount left on that one as well, so I can get another big log on here and leave enough on that one for the next size of log, etc., etc. You need to think a couple of steps ahead, a couple of logs ahead at all times. Okay, now I think I've got it.
So that logs in and it's a, a now at a height 110. This log at the moment is 130. So there's a 20 centimetre difference. So I'd have to drop this log 20 centimetres to get this wall to the same height as this wall, which is a little bit too much because at that end of the log, 20 centimetres is gonna mean that there's not enough wood sitting up above the log for the next log that I've got in mind. So instead of dropping it 20 centimeters, I'll drop it 15. And then on the next two logs that go in here, I'll again drop the log on this wall by five centimeters more than that wall. And we should be starting to get about level.
so I'm really enjoying the fact that the, that the big ends of the logs on these two walls are all going to one side and the angle is gradually going up. I think it's going to be visually really, really nice in the end. This log I've just put on here, ready to draw, and the angle looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. But that one I'm not liking so much. I want to get this end a little bit higher, so we've got more of an angle than it currently have. And the way I'm going to do that is, because I've got plenty of wood here, I'll move the camera, I think. So I've got plenty of wood here. So I'm going to just put in a couple of lines. Move this log out of the way and I'll cut a, a little bit of wood off of here in an area that's all going to be covered up when this sinks down onto it to drop that before I draw. So I'll get on with that. So with that hand drop down, I'm liking this angle a lot more. So I'll go ahead and, and draw that. One other thing I've decided. Is that while I have been alternating, short, long, short, long. From this point on, I've got plenty of logs. I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna actually start making each one probably longer. Not sure, but that's kind of the, my, my idea at the moment. I like the idea of the, this going up to meet with the roof. So, I'll draw those. But, project's getting interesting. 